Hello everybody, so today let's go through a little bit about the Nissan X-Trial and as you can see we had a 2.2 diesel engine, it's 100 kilowatts on it and the model is a <coughs> 30 and it's 4 by 2 wheel drive and we are now right into the diagnostics what the problem is we had a little <coughs> DPF light on which says then we need a DPF for regeneration so we don't got any faults on only a little problem with the DPF and if we want to find out the problem about the DBF uh, the particle filter let's go inside of a diagnostics and let's figure it out what could be a problem so in here we see the coolant temperature driving speed accelerator pedal position if a little bit at the throttle as you can see it's changing uh, voltage as well and battery voltage 13.5 volts is a good atmospheric pressure it's a one bar fuel temperature is a 38 degrees pulse duty of EGR actuator is just 29 30 percent so it's normal in the idle RPM let's go further on and uh, we see what we have an intake manifold pressure sensor it's uh, the same like atmospheric pressure it's uh, close to the one bar the fuel pressure rail is a 26 megapascals which would, would be about that 260 bars so that's kind of good pressure and if we give a little burst as you can see we go through a 600 bar and we can go a little bit more but we cannot because we had a fault of a DPF it not gives you more throttle and if I can see in here the RPM it's not gonna go anymore look I press the full pedal down and it goes only for 200 rpm 2000 rpm sorry so not more than that with the full throttle down as you can see we had a fault DPF light on it's a little green light on the screen it's a 2006 year car and let's go further on and what we see more is the number of cylinders of K exhaust gas differential pressure sensor look we had a zero bars and we if we're gonna give a burst 2000 rpm and the exhaust gas different is not changing at all so what we figure out then the probably the DPF is gone or DPF is empty it's already cut it out and um, engine room oil temperature is 29 degrees lambda sensor as you can see is a uh, 2.2 volts and if we put a burst it's not changing at all look lambda stays in the same place throttle angle let's go further on moving on um, RPM of engine look if I press the throttle pedal down it not goes more than 2000 RPM with the all full accelerator down accelerator is 100% down how we can figure it out pretty easy let's figure out couple things um, I already pressed the pause in the diagnostics as you can see here if we put the full accelerator pedal down is a position sensor one for the accelerator pedal it gives us almost 4 voltage 4 volts on it if we press on it accelerator pedal position sensor accelerator pedal here you go this line if we can look on the red line it's a red line it gives us almost 2 volts if we figure out the red line and the blue line it gives us almost the same values from the zero to the voltage where they go we had a two sensors one in here and another one you see here is a two pedal position sensors and it is a voltage for them the engine rpm when we press these pedal sensors right to the end it goes only to 2000 rpm you see the close if we see the close it 1920 rpm as you can see and this line is a green line look it's a mid-range rpm which one is in a neutral position if we press the accelerator pedal right down to the end we can see how the green line is goes right to the 2000 rpm and stays in this range that's because dpf is broken when the particle filter is gone 
you can see this line is not gonna give you more throttle than that and you will not be able to drive more than 40 kilometers an hour because the car is in the limp mode now let's go further on and goes in the error memory right in here and let's figure it out what actually faults is and if we look closer to the diesel Denso common rail system it's got a common rail system on this X-Trail T30 it's one of the last models with the T30 uh, is a model the last one the next one gonna be like a newer one but anyway the fault is this is a P codes is a two P codes it's P202 and the P2002 2002 so 202 um, yeah anyway the fault code is here and this is a fault description and the fault description says as diesel particle filter filter overloaded and another one is the same diesel particle filter filter overloaded the same two faults what we can do of course we can go and clear the faults out if we go pretty easy in return and just hit the erase button we just try to erase these faults and try to do a filter regeneration as you can see error, mo error memory was deleted so if we're gonna go return and let's figure it out do we have a error faults gone and you can see here is nothing gone it's still the same in still the same position so what we need to do actually in here you can see we can do a thousand times and thousand things what we can do we can reset after high pressure pump replacement reset injection adaption values reset particle filter ash impact and reset particle filter salt impact reset after a diesel particle filter is being replaced and injection quantity adjustment and reset lambda sensor adaption so there's a loads of stuff where we can reset and reprogram again let's go inside of a reset after diesel particle filter replacement let's press a continue and if we go here we had a notice what we can do with it so note the adoption values must be reset as soon as the particle filter has been replaced so if we're gonna do this stuff we have to reset this system and now we're gonna go right in and just hit a start button and please wait and we said then adoption completed continue with proceed let's do it proceed and we are back in main menu so we done the reset of a filter we replace it so here you go after resetting uh, replacing a DPF we had in zero faults and all system in a good position good working uh, clean position so there's another things what we can do we can reset these stuff ash impact and salt impact let's do a continue and as you can see the same text what guide us to the stuff what we can do let's do it with the start button and let's reset this stuff adoption is completed proceed and the same thing we're gonna do in here reset particle filter salt impact again we go inside again we see the same description and let's hit for the start button and adoption is completed so we done these two things we done the receipt of a particle filter and let's start the car so the car is started and let's see as of a special functions let's go inside of a special function and see the particle filter regeneration so that's the stuff what we can do but we had a notice that it's very very dangerous and we had a tension heads the following due to increasing exhaust temperatures and engine speed uh, the exhaust system and the engine machinery system must be intact and uh, in a power in proper working order so all this stuff must be in good condition engine damage may occur on high mileage engines so if the engine is the higher mileage let's figure it out what are the mileage and the kilometrage is on this one so as you can here see and see here we had a 246 kilometer thousand kilometers on it so this is for each people we will say it's a big kilometers or no it's a big mileage or not it's hard to say okay let's move on the vehicle must be standing outdoors on a fireproof surface so it should be on the concrete it should be on the surface which one cannot blow up or cannot be started to burn for example on the grass 
So next, no flammable objects in the vicinity of the vehicle. So basically nothing should be what can blow up again and uh, be a flammable. So which is very dangerous. All because the, the exhaust gas system is going to be very hot. What else you have to figure it out? Ensure adequate air circulation. So it's very necessary to be a air circulation about above your car, under your car, to make a protection and, and, and get the heat off from the system, to not make it overheat. Do not use an exhaust gas extractor. So you must not use exhaust gas extractor. What did it mean? It means you have nothing to put on the exhaust pipe to suck the all exhaust out. So it should not be done in the reality, basically inside of a facility or any uh, garage inside. So it's very dangerous. It should be done outside, what I suggest. Observe applicable fire prevention of environmental and protection regulations. So you have to make sure you are ready for firing up the car. The car can fire up and can burn pretty easy in the five means. So it's very dangerous and you have to make sure you have to be prepared to use a special proper systems to prevent the fire coming on. So this is very important. Has the specification of the vehicle manufacturers, e.g. on engine oil level or engine oil change. So that's very important to make the engine in good condition with the good oil on it, in it. So inside of the engine must be oil circulation and engine gonna go in a higher RPM. So everything is just because we're gonna go in the high temperatures everything is about high temperatures and the safety is in the first place so always make sure this stuff and always prepare for it to do a dpf regeneration so that's very important let's figure it out next so we hit the next button and you can see here caution the regeneration should be supervised so it basically should be person who will do it the regeneration may take up to 70 minutes it's the more than one hour it's gonna take for regeneration the engine speed is increasing during the regeneration so we increase the engine speed and then we do it regeneration the engine speed is lowered after the regeneration to the idle speed so yeah this whole process what we're gonna take so let's hit a continue button and let's see test conditions adequate fuel fuel level so it should be more fuel in the tank to make sure you can finish the regeneration vehicle stationary so vehicle should not be moved it should be stay on the dry basically unflammable place where it's safe parking brake applied so you have to do use a parking brake and engine idling so engine should be in idle rpm to start the test Coolant temperature, it should be more than 70 degrees. So that's another thing what is important. And air conditioning, conditioning switch it on. So the air conditioner should be on. Let's start it. So let's hit a continue. And we see the start particle filter regeneration with start. Let's do it. Test condition being made. And as you can see, particle filter regeneration not possible. That's because we had a fault in the system and that's because the DPF is already been burnt and yeah, that's something wrong with it. That's definitely 100%. And as you can see, we are back in the same place. The filter is overloaded and we cannot do a regeneration process. So what we're going to do, we definitely need to replace this DPF filter off of, just of this car and uh, do a regeneration or just do adoption process and yeah what can i say we can do a reprogramming job for the tested so we can reprogram the dpf system and test it off if the all other system is fine and if the all other systems is fine then we can put a new dpf filter in and do again a reprogramming of a software and basically run the car normally without any problems with changing the DPF system. So that's very important. And there's a lot of stuff what you can do with them. So thanks for watching. Leave a like, leave a calm and good luck with your DPF system. Bye bye.